Uh, TA, just tell me what it means to get this job as defensive coordinator after you spent some time with the Steelers at a different position. Uh, it means a lot. I know there's a lot of responsibility attached to this job uh, based on the tradition of defense that's you know been in this city for a long, long time. And so it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting, uh, but you know there's a lot of responsibility that goes with it. What is going to change? Not that we want you to give away secrets or anything, but in terms of maybe the mindset or what you're going to be asking guys to do. Well, we're going to really what we're going to be doing is asking our guys to play to the standard that's been set. Um, we feel we left a lot out there last year and we know we have to improve and we will improve. And so I think that's really what our mindset is um, in terms of changes. There's going to be maybe some little tweaks in terms of how we do practice, how we do some, some walkthroughs and some structural things. But uh, I think overall the bottom line with defense is you got to, you know, you got to whoop a block, you got to get off, you got to make a tackle, you got to turn the ball over. And those are core principles of defense no matter where you go. And we have to be better at that. Communication is something we've heard a lot from your guys that they want to improve. How do you do that during, you know, mini camp? Well, you do that every time you're out on the field and you're doing drills, you're doing, um, you know, individual work, you're doing things, you're always communicating and you're setting the bar, you're setting yourself up for success. Uh, I, t I told our guys, as a matter of fact, I told our guys today, you lose plays before they're ever even snapped if you're not lined up right, if you're not looking at the right things, if you're not communicating. Uh, and and communication is a two-way street. Not only just making the communication, but you know, acknowledging it and and executing it. Because uh, we've had some issues where we've communicated and we still didn't execute. And so we have to just continue to work at that and be better at that. Brian Flores was added to the defensive staff. What does he bring uh, to you personally, and also just to the defense as a whole? Well, I think obviously you have a very very knowledgeable coach, a good coach. Uh, really good communicator, uh, detailed. I think what he does is he brings a different point of view because of where he's been and the mm -hmm. things that he's done. And I think that always, uh, as you try to mesh some of the good, really good things that they've done into the program uh, to help us. So that's where he's, he's really he's really good. Good sounding board just on certain types of structure. A lot of different ways that he, uh, he, he brings a, a, good, a good thing to our program. And, and it's really good to have a, a really nice I mean, as Mike would call him, probably a high floor coach, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a football junkie. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What exactly do you want him doing at practices? It seems like he's kind of bebopping around and, you know, checking everything out. Yeah, and I think that's part of, of how we want to use him. Uh, when you have a guy who has, uh, you know, he's like a player, has that type of skill set where, where he can bounce around and help you in multiple positions, I think that's important, and that's why uh, he's been – you see him with the linebackers, you see him with the, the D-line, you see him with the DBs, and so he becomes an extra set uh, of eyes and ears uh, to help us try to reach our potential. We talked to Coach Grady last week, and you know he's discussing his rookie season, as he called it, and how you were so influential and helpful to him. He said you're always going to be a secondary coach, but what are you expecting out of him this year, being that you are the defensive coordinator now? He better be good. <laughs> uh, no, I, uh, I, I have all confidence in the world in Grady. Uh, he does, it's really good. I, I've known Grady a long time and he, he did a great job last year and it's good to watch him uh, on his own. I try to kind of stay out of his way as much as I can because I want him to have his imprint on the secondary and, and, and his voice to be heard. And, and I'm there as a, as a sounding board, as a backup uh, for anything, but he's, uh, he, he's going to do great. And, and uh, you know, it, it, as a secondary coach, he's got to remember, I'm always going to have my finger in that room yeah. a little bit. It, you're, you can't take it away, you know? Right. It makes right. sense. Um, other than Cam, TJ, and Minka, who, who's a leader? Who's somebody rallying this defense? Well, I think, you know, you have those, those guys. They're strong leaders. And I think you have, we have a lot of good uh, core team guys that, you know, put the team first. And you can rely on any of those. You have, you know, your Tyson. Uh, you know, Tyson's in that category. Cam Sutton's a guy that you can count on when mm -hmm. you need things. Uh, Terrell Edmonds, those are guys that have been in this program uh, that you that you know you can you can you can count on them to lead in the right way. And so I think that's important. We have we have multiple guys. The three ones you mentioned are obviously the strongest ones that you're going to get because of obviously uh, how they play and 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 the things they brought uh, or they bring to the table. Uh, but we have a lot of a good leadership throughout the throughout the group. I don't think um, anybody would say they didn't understand why Stefan Tua decided to retire, but in terms of just football and what he could have brought to a D-line that really needed some help, um, how does that impact your defense? Well, I think obviously when you lose a, a, a guy that is a heck of a player as, as Stefan, 
uh, was. Uh, you know, you obviously it affects you some, but it's the nature of the game. At some point, he wasn't going to play forever. He was going to be out of here, so I think it gives opportunities for the guys that are behind him to really step up and elevate their game. I thought Worm last year did an outstanding job of, you know, coming in, thought he was going to be probably a backup and ended up starting, mm -hmm. playing a lot of really good football for us, and we expect that from whoever's in that room. Everyone's talking about louder milk and just the way he's changed his body, similar to maybe what we saw from Zach Gentry on the offense side of the mm -hmm. ball last year. Um, he said he kind of took it to heart to get bigger. What are you seeing from him being that I understand this was only OTAs yeah. and mini camp? Yeah, I think what you see is that he's he's actually got that that weight, that grown man weight on, and it's and it's good weight, good strength, good muscle. Uh, he's a big, big man, and he, and he showed some good promise last year, so we're expecting him to build on it coming into his second year. And I think he understands, obviously, the NFL game a lot better uh, this year, and I, I expect him to make a nice jump for us. All right, thanks for your time, T.A. All right, you got it, miss.